Some health insurance companies just charge you out the wazoo. Let me tell you what you should do. Call Pat Davis, 501-605-6935, and he'll help you save 30 to 50% on your health insurance or visit him online. It's yourhealthplanman.com. Here's your forecast on 101.1 FM. The answer. Warm and mainly dry again today, partly cloudy with a high around 87 degrees. Just an isolated straight shower or two possible. And tonight slowed down to 69. A little better rain chance tomorrow, 30% for Friday. From the Channel 7 Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Melinda Mayo for 101.1 The Answer. 101.1 FM, The Answer. Traffic traffic off to a pretty good start around the Lower Rock area this Thursday morning. This report is sponsored by Lowe's. For the most part, moving at the speed limit on the major interstates and roadways. Do have some minor delays due to an accident block on the right shoulder. 40 eastbound just before Kerr Road, exit 165. Are you ready for fall? But your house isn't. Luckily, Lowe's has what you need and the prices you want to get your front yard, backyard, every yard ready to host this season. Gardening and grilling and leaf blowing starts at Lowe's. I'm Cairo on the 101.1 The Answer. And Arkansas talk legend Dave Ellswick on 101.1 FM The Answer. Good morning, Central Arkansas. Time to wake up, get up, get ready to go to work or whatever it is that you're going to do today on this absolutely beautiful Thursday fall morning. A little rain would be in order, but that's out of our control other than praying for it. But we're glad to have you listening to the Dave Ellswick Show. If you have not figured it out yet, I am not Dave Ellswick. I'm filling in for him. I'm Kim Hammer, State Senator. Uh, Dave's off on a little R&R time, taking care of himself, taking care of his family during this time. And so you get to listen to me for the next two hours. I hope you'll stay around. I have worked hard to give you a full lineup. Uh, you will earn three continuing ed unit hours for this for your personal degree. And on the show is going to be Matt Pitch, Senator Matt Pitch, who's running a statewide race for the treasurer of the state of Arkansas. Going to have him on here in just a second, followed by Jim Hickey, who is the pro tem of the Senate. We're going to talk about the upcoming sessions that we are going to be dealing with and hopefully getting done with, with redistricting and some unfinished business to take care of. From 6.30 to 7, I have Austin Booth, who's going to be in studio. He is the director of Game and Fish, and with uh, hunting season opening up with bow season, we thought it would be good to get Austin in, and we'll just talk about Game and Fish and some of the things to expect coming up during this hunting season. From 7 to 7.30, I've got Philip Powell, which if you're watching Facebook Live, good morning. Sorry you're having to look at this this morning first thing when you get up. That's that's your fault. Uh, but Philip is in studio this morning. He is with Farm Bureau. We actually just finished a summit about broadband down in Hot Springs. Had a great summit down there, Philip. And uh, from 7 to 7.30, we're going to talk about broadband and, and the goals, the challenges, but also the successes uh, that we're starting to have getting broadband out to the state. And from 7.30 to 7.45, Senator John Bozeman is going to be joining us. And did you know, did you know that your liberal Democrat president, John, or Joe Biden, I think I've got his disease, uh, Joe Biden is wanting to direct the IRS that if you make a withdrawal from your account of $600 or more, it used to be $10,000, but $600 or more, the IRS is going to know about it. Senator Bozeman is going to be on from 730 to 745 to talk about that. And then we're going to finish up the hour with a group called Day of Tears. I've actually got Diane Shores from Virginia and Catherine Davis from Georgia that are going to be in studio with an organization called Day of Tears. I think that'll be something that uh, a lot of you will be interested in listening to what this organization is all about. And not every day you get guests all the way from Virginia and Georgia to sit in your studio. So we've got a really full hour. Glad to have you listening this morning. We'll try to keep it entertaining, educational, and above all, we want you to just uh, leave the show at 8 o'clock a little bit smarter, a little bit better. And to start that off, We've got Senator Matt Pitch joining us on the line here on 101.1 FM, The Answer, The Dave Ellswick Show. Matt, good to have you on. The, on I'm going to have to correct myself. This is not the Kim Hammer Show. That's Saturdays from noon to one here on the station. But glad to have you joining us on The Dave Ellswick Show this morning. 
Well, thank you for the honor, Kim. Uh, I guess I'm going to start living vicariously through you. You're the, the state senator, you pastor a church, and now you're hosting the prestigious Dave Ellswick show. So I'm living vicariously through you. What a great honor. So well, well, thank you. Now, hey, you're up, but I, I was a little disappointed when I got in and I looked at the mic. It was not it was not gold. I, th I think it's plastic. I was a little, I was a little disappointed with Dave. He didn't leave the gold mic out for he didn't you. He leave and me. the real one there. Yeah. 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 He, yeah he I can understand. Took it with him. I don't know what, Hey Matt, yeah. you are traveling the state of Arkansas because you're running a state, a statewide race, uh, for treasure. In fact, you were in Fort Smith last night, drove back in this morning. Cause we got some business to take care of the Capitol. How is it being a sitting Senator running for a statewide race anyway? Well, you know, when you get in public service and you run like you and I both did as state rep and then the Senate seats open at various times and you run for those, you run amongst members of your church, members of your community, your kids, school, sports. I mean, you tend to know a lot of the people you run in. But when you go to a statewide race, it's a it, we're not a big state, but we are a big state geographically. And you've got a lot of great people to go meet. And I'm, let's see, I started this in June, basically. And you do a lot of travel. You go to a lot of different places. You meet a lot of neat people. But that's what it takes. I, I think the citizens of Arkansas, they want to know their elected official. We're a small state, and they want to shake your hands, look you in the eye. And, you know, I spoke to a group yesterday right here in Little Rock, and and it was neat because people know kind of what the senator is. They don't really know our names, but they like seeing you at their Rotary Clubs or their county parties or their Reagan Day dinners. And so that's probably the biggest difference between running for a state office and running as a state senator or state rep is the travel and the amount of people you get to meet and it's pretty cool well and you wouldn't mention it but i'll mention it for you in the midst of your race also you and your wife got covid i know your church uh, got hit with some folks having covid yeah. you had some pray, tough... pray for the people of our church i'm chairman of our congregation we're a small church over in fort smith and we had one of our members didn't think she had it but wasn't sure came to church and wow it went through us like a fire and Let's just say I'm tired of looking at widows that are crying at a funeral. So yep. it's been pretty rough. Yep. Well, and that just those folks. Well, and and we will, and and it speaks to your character as far as endurance, because I know while you were dealing with that, um, you know, you still got the race to run, but you're not letting anything deter you from doing that. So you need to be commended yeah. for that. Let me ask you, uh, what lessons you're going to take out of being a state senator that you think will help you if you are. Um, elected as the uh, state treasurer having the experience you've got on the legislative branch you're going to go to the dark side and be one of them uh <laughs> one of them you're one of them yeah, so yeah. what are, what are you gonna what are you gonna do to help out well i uh, think i'm gonna kind of reference you and i've served the same time or i think you have two years more in the house with me but we've sat together we've led together we've bled together as they say over legislation etc and I think the, the thing you have coming from a state legislator into a constitutional officer, I mean, I'm a business guy, I own business ventures, et cetera. And being a constitutional officer, you have a task to do. Our state treasurer issues warrants for money to our cities, to our counties, to our schools. They take the federal dollars, mix it with the state dollars, and they're the fiscal agent to make sure – those entities get it when it's time. As a matter of fact, they do so many transactions that only two banks on the planet do more. Bank of America and Lloyds of London do more transactions than the Arkansas State Treasury. And you have to be running a business that's hitting on all cylinders, so to speak. Because if one of the 580 cities in Arkansas or the 75 counties doesn't get their, their financial transaction to be able to do business with it, then you're the you're the cog that stopped the wheel from spinning. And so, you know, I, I bring what I think I know about the state treasurer's office, what I've tried to study. In fact, I got a meeting after this is over. I try to spend an hour a week learning the job with current staff that it's a lot like running a business that has big financial numbers. Um, but 
you're you have limits around you, thank goodness, uh, set by your elected officials in the state legislature, and how you function. You know, probably a classic example is what do you do with that money? You can't go, you know, place it all on. What's the what's the saying? Place it. You can't place it on, on black thirteen. On yeah, come on, yeah, black thirteen, man. Black thirteen. You can't play Bitcoin. Whatever. I shouldn't disperse Bitcoin, but you have to invest in paper. Uh, low risk treasury. You can't put taxpayers' dollars at risk. Thank goodness. Again, and the legislature is who puts those boundaries around what can and can't be done. And I feel like, I feel like you. I feel like me. People who've been at this a little bit, we kind of get the rules and regs around this state agency, if you will, the uh, state treasurer. But actually getting in there and running it and making sure it's a high-efficient team. You know, I'm a coach's kid. I build teams in my businesses. That's what I want to do with the treasurer's okay. office is a cross-functional team. Hey, you mentioned team. Uh, we're going to add a member to the team here in just a second. got to take a break here on the Dave Ellswick Show. I'm Kim Hammer, state senator, filling in for Dave, who's off on a little r and We've got Matt Pitch, who is a sitting state senator. Uh, he sits right in front of me, so I throw stuff in him in the back of the head. Um <laughs> when he doesn't vote the way I want him to vote. And uh, he's running for state treasurer. But I got Jimmy Hickey, Pro Tim, on the line. He's going to be joining us right after this break on the Dave Ellswick Show. Come back. We're going to make your morning an experience that you'll never forget, though you wish you could. You know, I've been talking to you about how to save some money for uh, your car if it happens to break down. If it breaks down like mine did where you lose an engine or a transmission, let me tell you how to save some big money. Use Sonny's Auto Salvage, your number one choice for recycled auto parts. What Sonny's does is go out and get total lost vehicles, ones that have been in a crash, can't drive them anymore, but the engines are still good, transmissions are still good, a lot of parts are still good. They take those parts, they test them, make sure everything's working perfectly, and then they'll put them in your car. They'll do it for you. They've got the laborers and the mechanics to do it for you. So you're going to save money. You'll save money on getting a rebuilt engine or getting a brand new engine or buying a brand new car. Every part guaranteed comes with a standard warranty. They offer one, two, and three-year warranties on all their parts. So do like I do. Call Sonny's Auto Salvage, 982-7451. That's 982-7451. 101.1 FM, the answer, traffic. Still dealing with some minor delays this Thursday morning on the east side. This report is sponsored by Lowe's. Going to be seeing a light tap at the brake light, something too serious. Things clear up right after a wreck block in the right shoulder. 40 eastbound just before Kerr Road, exit 165. Are you ready for fall, but your house isn't? Luckily, Lowe's is what you need and the prices you want to get your front yard, backyard, every yard ready to host this season. Gardening and grilling and leaf blowing starts at Lowe's. Iro on 101.1, The Answer. News, opinion, insight. This is 101.1 FM, The Answer. A lawsuit filed by Little Rock's chief of police, Keith Humphrey, naming the Fraternal Order of Police and 21 other individuals was dismissed by a federal judge on Wednesday. The lawsuit claimed several members of the LRPD, including Assistant Chiefs Alice Falk and Hayward Finks, conspired against Chief Humphrey in an effort to have him fired. But District Judge James Moody found the case did not meet the legal standards necessary to move forward. Meantime, Chief Humphrey remains the subject of multiple lawsuits. Allegations against him range from harassment to retaliation against his subordinates. Little Rock police are searching for a runaway 17-year-old girl. Police say Lania Griffin ran away from her home Tuesday night around 11 and might have left in a red Dodge Charger with black racing stripes. She's described as 5 foot 1, 190 pounds. Anyone with information is asked to call Little Rock police. For more news and weather, download our free KATV news and weather apps. From the Channel 7 Newsroom, I'm Allison Courtney for 10. 1.1 The Answer. Ladies, join Salem Media for a night of hope, inspiration, and encouragement at our Ladies' Night Out on October 7th at City Center in Little Rock. The speaker will be Andrea Lennon of True Vine Ministry. Andrea is an on-the-go kind of girl who loves Jesus. Biblical hope is trustful expectation in regards to the promises of God. Let me tell you, we have hope because every word in this Bible is yes and amen. Every promise to claim as well as every precept that God calls us to follow. 
hope flows in and through our lives when we align our minds, when we align our hearts with God and his word. My sisters, my friends, hang in there. God is at work in your life and he's doing something that is greater than what you can see. Hang on. Andrea's life calling is to teach women to know the truth, live the truth, and share the truth. Doors open at 5 p.m. The event is from 6 to 8. Tickets only $10 per person. Great food, fellowship, hope, inspiration, and encouragement. Get your tickets now at eventbrite.com. For more information, call 501-404-6560. Stimulating Talk with Dave Ellswick. 101.1 FM, The Answer. Hey, welcome back to the Dave Ellsworth Show. This is Tim Hammer, State Senator, filling in for Dave, who's on vacation. Thank you for joining us this morning. We know you could have turned your radio to any dial, but you told it, uh, to station, but you turned it to uh, to this one, and we appreciate that. Hope you have a great experience while you're listening to us this morning, getting ready to get up and get out there and go to work or whatever it is that you're going to do. Uh, we have on the radio this morning online Matt Pitch, who is a sitting state senator running for the statewide office of treasurer. Uh, if you're watching via Facebook Live, good morning. Sorry, this is the image you got to look at first thing in the morning. I know you want to roll over and go back to bed, but uh, this is Philip Powell sitting over here. He's going. He is with Farm Bureau. He's going to be on from seven to seven thirty. Uh, so no, this is not Matt Pitch. Uh, you you probably wouldn't want to vote for Matt if you saw him. But anyway, anyway. <laughs> love you, Matt. Uh, yeah, but likewise. Likewise, yeah, you betcha, baby. Uh, I'm good at it in the beauty pageant, right? Uh, yeah, that's right. We'd be fighting for the bottom, buddy. Uh, that's right. Austin Booth with Game and Fish, director of Game and Fish, should be coming in here anytime now. He, he better be. He's going to be on from 637 if he doesn't want to appear for a state agency committee or anything like that. Uh, 637, <laughs> Austin is going to be here, director of Game and Fish, talking about the upcoming hunting season. 7.30, John Bozeman, and uh, from 7.45 to 8 o'clock, we've got a group, uh, Day of Tears. They are actually, I've got two ladies, one from, uh, is going to be here from Georgia, and one's going to be here from Virginia in studio. Promise you, uh, this is something Deanne Vaught, Representative Deanne Vaught, helped set up, uh, pass some legislation about Day of Tears, and we're going to have them on the show. So just call your boss, tell them you'll be late, because you got to listen to the Dave Ellswick Show with Kim Hammer as the host. Right now, Jimmy Hickey, Senator Jimmy Hickey, is joining us. Matt, you just stay on the line if you want to. You can keep him and me straight or referee either one. So, Jimmy, good to have you on the on the Dave Ellswick show this morning. Uh, uh, thank you for having me, Senator Hammer. I think uh, we all know you're the one we've got to try to double team to keep uh, keep keep you in line. So, yeah, give it your best shot, buddy. But anyway, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, uh, Jimmy, how long? Uh, you, you're from now, Texas, Kent. Hey, don't talk over the host, man. Come on, guys. This is not the Senate, okay? A little decorum, would you? Come on, man. Jeez. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I want to tell you all something. These two guys are really good guys. Uh, I've gotten to be good friends with both of them. We can do this kind of stuff and not carry grudges. And when we try to kill each other, Bills, we still love each other. Um, but, Jim, tell, uh, tell folks where you're from just in case they don't know. Yes, I'm, uh, I am from Texarkana. Uh, have lived, lived there most of my life. I've actually lived in Asheville, city outside of Texarkana, a few miles uh, for a while. But uh, grew up in uh, Texarkana. My family had a had a farm. Uh, I went into banking, did that for 25 years, retired out of there, and I currently have a couple of uh, uh, residential uh, uh, leasing businesses rental businesses is what i call we used to have a construction business where i built single family homes also but that was one thing i uh, could not do while i was on the senate it just uh, did not mesh you know a lot of people don't realize um we're all senators uh, and and this is the same of of representatives because you know matt and i had that experience of starting down in the as they say the lower chamber and coming up to the other end, you just kind of jumped right over us, went to the top. But um, that, you know, people maybe don't understand that, yeah, it's a, it quote, uh, air quote, part-time job. Uh, but uh, I don't know a senator or representative, honestly, that doesn't work at it full-time. Uh, and a lot of them have businesses back home because you're just, you're just one term away from being sent home. Uh, so you got to kind of have some something waiting for you when, when your political season is over. Uh, but a lot of people don't understand the, the demands of running business. I'm not complaining, just making a statement that uh, a lot of senators, representatives have businesses back home. And I always feel for you guys that live on the outer limits, the outer banks, uh, like down in Texas, Canada, or 
Matt, you over there in Fort Smith, how that you're away from your families like this week, all week, or you got to drive back. I know Jimmy, you'll appreciate this. Uh, Jimmy, you've driven back. I know after a long day to attend a farm bureau meeting back in your district and turn around and drive back that night because of your duties as pro tem. What, what is it as pro tem that you do, Jimmy, besides herd cats called senators? Well, definitely, 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 definitely what you just said. I mean, of course, uh, my job, uh, my job is to try to lead the body and, uh, try to manage, you know, when, have discussions with the governor and, and the house and try to mesh those together so that we can all all come together to see if we can uh, develop what's better, you know, some better in legislation, you know, for the, uh, for the people of Arkansas. So it, uh, like I say, it entails a bunch of things, like I say, dealing with the members behind the scenes, trying to see what their wants and desires are and, uh, talking with other members to see if they've got interest in that. And, uh, uh, trying to find that, uh, you know, ground where uh, we possibly can go forward. Speaking on that, uh, we've got the we've got to take care of the rest of the business. We went into recess um, back whenever we finished the the business. Um, what, is that first time, uh, Matt? You get you're pretty good historical mind. Did, is that first time the Senate, the uh, legislative branch, has ever gone into recess? And and what does it mean to go into recess? Well, not to jump on into the thing, but my understanding, and Jimmy, you weigh in. I know you've done a lot with BLR to make this work right, but I think this is the first time we've had an extended recess. I mean, I think legislators through time have probably said, you know, you had some event or something you needed to not meet for a couple of days or what have you. But I think this is pretty unprecedented, isn't it, Jimmy? Well, I, I believe that there's possibly, you know, some some times away in the past. Uh, now and then, the, in the near future, I think it's the first time that we went into the extended recess, and mm -hmm. uh, just to kind of weigh in, our uh, you know our reason for doing that was that, of course, we're we're constitutionally required to do the congressional redistricting, and what had transpired, as most everybody knows, because of COVID. Uh, whenever we were in session, we had not had this, had not yet had the census data back. So we wanted to go into an extended recess just so that the legislature legislature could maintain their uh, independence, you know, from from the executive branch. Because if we come back after we have signed died, uh, the governor has to call us back. Of course, the governor, he's in charge of, or he's one of the members, one of the constitutional officers who's in the part of the, uh, part of the, does the other redistricting. But as far as the congressional, that is for the uh, uh, House and the Senate Senate to do. So we wanted to maintain that in, independence. So when, in doing that, in discussions with the Bureau, what, what we had done is they said, well, you can do this. Uh, you can stay in this extended recess, and what you have to do is we did a did a resolution that stated what we were going to come back for, and with their research and their studies, what what we were told and what we had analyzed is that it had to be something that we were supposed to do, uh, but we're not yet, but we're not able to do. Again. This congressional redistricting is almost a tailor-made. It is a tailor-made example because we were supposed to do it con through the Constitution, but we couldn't do it because the federal government had not yet given us that census data. Also, within that resolution, and I asked for this to be put on, uh, that we knew while we were in session it had just come out that the federal government was going to have these what they call the rescue funds, and all of these billions of dollars were going to be available out there to the states. However, what they had not done, and they were themselves were saying it, they did not have any guidelines or procedures set up on what we were going to be required to do to accept the money, uh, how we may have to you know, have other accounts or appropriate it, we didn't know. So I had uh, talked with our attorneys and uh, myself and Speaker Shepard and said, look, can we also add that because we know already that we're going to get this money but we don't know what we're supposed to do. And they said, yes, we can, we can add that. And we did that just in, in the event that if we were to need to come back in quickly uh, to make all that work, because that money 
was for COVID uh, uh, issues uh, that we would that we we would have that opportunity to do it. So that's uh, what we're doing. We're, so we're planning on coming back. Oh, Jimmy. Whoa, uh, Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy. Yes. Got it. Got to interrupt yes. you, Heidi. I'm, I'm going to cut you off. We're going to go to a break. Can you hang on just a few minutes? Sure. Okay. We're going to go take a break. This is uh, the Dave Ellsworth Show. I'm Kim Hammer, State Senator, filling in for Dave. Jimmy Hickey, State Senator. Matt Pitt, State Senator. Come on back. We'll finish up. Need more ammo to debate your liberal friends? Load up. We've got you covered. 101.1 FM, The Answer. Let me give you a name, Pat Davis. I want you to keep that name uh, and then write it down on a piece of paper after my show goes off and you're parked somewhere or whatever. You're probably listening in your car right now. And then write down this phone number, 501-605-6935. Six zero five sixty nine thirty five. That will give you the opportunity to talk to Pat and save yourself a uh, whole lot of money when it comes to health insurance. Thirty to fifty percent, no copays. Great plan if you're self-employed. Actual insurance, not a share plan, and all the excess money goes back to you instead of the insurance company. Call him. 501-605-6935 or visit him online, yourhealthplanman.com. That's yourhealthplanman.com. Take the answer with you anywhere with our free mobile app, 1011fmtheanswer.com. Tune in, iHeart or radio.com. Breaking news and stimulating talk. 101.1 FM, The Answer. This is Jerry Boyer of Town Hall Finance for townhall.com. Vaccine mandates are driving vaccine hesitancy. I've noticed a sharp shift upwards in the intensity of rhetoric in opposition to the anti-COVID vaccines from the grassroots since the Biden administration has started advocating various forms of government mandates. People don't like being pushed around, and some people respond to federal government mandates by doubling down on their vaccine hesitancy. The case against mandates is different from any possible case against voluntary vaccine usage. Conservatism has always made a very strong distinction between the state and the society. The state is top-down coercive power. Society is built upon many millions of individual and family decisions. I decided to get vaccinated, not because the government told me to. My research led me to this decision. But no one should be forcing conservatives into groupthink for or against voluntary vaccinations. I'm Jerry Boyer. You want great deals? We've got great deals. DealsforLittleRock.com is your site for discounted deals on food, services, private school tuition, and so much more. Visit DealsforLittleRock.com and save. If you're looking for real Mexican food, then you need to fiesta at El Portone Mexican Restaurant. Right now, get a $20 gift card for only $15. DealsforLittleRock.com. Get great deals right now at DealsforLittleRock.com. That's DealsforLittleRock.com. Here's your forecast on 101.1 FM, The Answer. Highs back up in the upper 80s today and only a 10% chance of a few isolated showers. So mainly dry, partly cloudy, and tonight's low down to 69 degrees. Just a little better rain chance tomorrow at 30%. From the Channel 7 Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Melinda Mayo for 101.1 The Answer. 101.1 FM, The Answer, Traffic. Drivers in the northwest going to want to take caution with some road construction causing some minor to moderate delays. This report is sponsored by Lowe's. 
Control Road, Highway 10. We've got some road construction shutting down both eastbound and westbound the left turn lanes at North Rodney Barham, River Mountain Road. The intersection there. Traffic may continue forward or right, but left turns not permitted. Are you ready for fall, but your house isn't? Luckily Lowe's has what you need and the prices you want to get your front yard, backyard, every yard ready to host this season. Gardening and grilling and leaf blowing starts at Lowe's. I'm Cairo on 101.1, The Answer. Dave's back. The lines are open. 501-823-0965. The Dave Ellswick Show. 101.1 FM. The Answer. Hey, welcome back to the Dave Ellswick Show. This is State Senator Kim Hammer hosting for Dave, who's off on a little R&R, taking care of some family business, so... Thank you for joining us here. We've got a full lineup this morning. Right now, I've got Matt Pitch, who is a sitting state senator running for the treasurer's office on a statewide race. Jim Hickey, pro tem of the Arkansas State Senate. And I've also been joined in studio now, along with Philip Powell of Farm Bureau. We have Austin Booth, who is the director of Game and Fish. And so we got a full lineup this morning. Uh, Matt and Jim, let me give you about five minutes to wrap up where we were a minute ago. Jimmy, you were talking about uh, about the uh, extended session and, and kind of where it's going to go from here. Just not so much down in the weeds, but just give people an education of the process of how this thing is going to flow. We're in, we're in a extended recess. We're going to come out of that when and then what happens after that and just kind of take people down the path of what to expect. Okay. Well, um, our, our intentions are, uh, as we've put out, is that uh, myself and the speaker are going to, Call the session back back in on twenty on the 29th, September 29th, the thirtieth and the first. What we've have planned is we have some preliminary uh, meetings scheduled of our uh, state and I mean of uh, the Senate and the uh, House state agencies uh, uh, committee, where they're going to be hearing these uh, redistricting bills that are filed by members. We've actually got those set up on September 20th, September 23rd, and September 27th. And also during those during that time, members of the public are going to be allowed to uh, comment on the bills and and to speak, so that we'll have that public input. So that's uh, that's our intention, and then it'll be you know uh, hope hope that we can get uh, consensus out there during during that time. Uh, there won't be any votes, of course, taken whenever we're not in in session. Uh, whenever, but whenever we come back in, we will hopefully have everything lined out so that we can complete everything and. Uh, and do that uh, that one particular item, and and then adjourn signing die. And the uh, you mentioned something about people having, um, you know, the public having input. Are we going to allow the public to have access to the building? Or are we going to be operating under the same rules we were in the spring? Or have you guys even talked about that yet? Uh, we haven't discussed that, but those uh, uh, the rules that we had during the uh, spring. Of course, I guess we could re up those, but I don't. I think that they've probably, uh, you know, kind of gone away and uh, with the meetings we've had, been having in Big Mac with the public. So, uh, you know, if we need to have some uh, carryover rooms or something like that, they'll be available. But I think it'll be a, a more uh, uh, a more open process. Okay. Well, and the process we had before wasn't bad. I mean, in fact, I heard very little complaints about the way that we did it before, driven out of, you know, social distancing and, you know, COVID was at a fever pitch back in the first year and, I really didn't hear a lot of complaints about it. In fact, I heard some, you know, folks thought that it was a, a pretty good process. That'll be decided in the future. After the after we get a signy die, which just means we close the door on the session, we're done, and we move on to next, there'll be the special session to deal with the tax package, or is that still up in the air to be debated? Uh, no, it's uh, – uh, we don't have a date yet. Of course, that's uh, totally up to the governor whenever he calls it. I know that the governor's intentions have, have always been that we would either up, immediately go back in or shortly thereafter. Now, the way everything looks is that we're not going to probably go immediately back in because as far as the legislature, because of all of these uh, extra stimulus funds that were coming in, we had hired a consultant, Moody's, and they've been doing some analysis on us for our tax cuts that we're looking to do. We've been working with the governor's office and DFNA, so... Uh, probably, you know, I, you know. Again, it's up to the governor on that, but it won't be immediate. But it'll be shortly thereafter, probably within a week or, or so, or two. Yeah, and to the point that Senator Hickey was talking about, we did hire a consultant because we've had this influx of all this federal money that we know is not going to hang around forever. And did that give a false um, indicator of our economic status? And you know, how much of an influence did it have? And when when that 
federal money uh, that they keep printing out of a back garage somewhere up in D.C. goes away, what's that going to do as far as uh, our overall fiscal uh, status as a state? So a uh, little bit of an explanation about that. All right. I need to get Austin Booth, the director of Game Fish, on. He's been kind enough to come in studio. Anything, uh, Senator Hickey, you want to share before I let you go? No, sir. I'm good. And Senator Hammer, I just appreciate you having me on. And uh, uh, Senator Pitch and others, thank you. All right, Matt, anything you want to share? Just that Senator Hickey and I are both big hunters, and I know you're talking to Austin Booth. Everybody have a safe hunting season. So Great. wish that for everybody. Yeah, we need to uh, we need to have a little contest at the Senate. Who can bag the biggest one? I'm, I'm sure we'll work out some little, uh, you know, le you know, le ob sorry, Austin, legally, obviously, you know, and and uh, eight eight cylinder guns don't count. It's got to be the real deal. So we we will draw up the challenge and and get that uh, little fun exercise going. But we don't want to bring down uh, what was the lady of what was the name of the lady that won the silver uh, in the Olympics? What's that was Kaylee Browning. Yeah, she's not allowed. Uh, that'd be inside unfair advantage if she comes down. So, all right. Hey, Matt and Jimmy, thanks. Appreciate you. Enjoy working with you, and we'll let you go. Thanks for being on the Dave Ellswick Show. All right, transitioning yes, to something a little funner. That would be Austin Booth, uh, who is the director of Game Fish. Fairly new. Uh, you still honeymoon it, or have you you know had your first big big uh, bite yet? Uh, well, I'm having a blast. Okay. Uh, I, I took over on July 1st, uh, and having a really good time. You know, I, I have grown up in this state, uh, except for the time that I spent in the Marine Corps and spend every second I can outside like most Arkansans and getting, uh, the opportunity to work on that from the, from the inside out, uh, just truly a lot of fun. So if you feel comfortable, you don't have to, but I always give. Sure the guests that I have on any show that I'm hosting or my own show Saturday noon from one, the Kim hammer show here on 101.1 FM. The answer join in. Uh, so tell, tell folks a little bit about your family. If you don't mind, sure. you say you grew up yeah. here. So just to the level you feel comfortable. Yeah. So they feel personally connected to you. I grew up in Scott, Arkansas. Oh, in the suburbs of Scott on the North side of 165, yeah. <clears throat> and, um, went off to college at the Citadel and uh, joined the Marine Corps after the Citadel, and then moved my wife and three kids back to Arkansas in 2019. And I've got an eight-year-old girl, a five-year-old girl, and a two-year-old little boy. Very good. How long were you in the military? For eight years. Eight years. Yeah. Thank you for your service, truly. It was Thank an you honor. For uh, any, anything you want to holler out at your fellow Marines or anything? Hey, uh, yeah, really for any veteran out there, it's um, – it's been a rough couple of weeks um, overseas, and it uh, doesn't matter what side of the fence you you, you fall on. I just think from the human perspective, um, it, it, it's been a hard few weeks for veterans. And as we look backwards towards our service in Afghanistan and what it meant, I'd uh, just like to encourage people uh, to reach out to a veteran and ask them how they're doing, ask them hard questions, uh, because that's what we need more than anything right now is, is community, whether it's in the context of Afghanistan or even more broadly. So you served in Afghanistan? Yes, I did. Well, even more appreciation for what you did. Uh, oh, thank you. I, I didn't bring you in here to talk about this, but the the, the natural flow to it is, um, from my opinion, everyone that went over there and did what they did, served the way they served, gave people a little taste of freedom that they had to enjoy for a little while. Uh, you are highly appreciated and respected, and I seriously mean that. I've got a deep respect for any veteran um, I wish it would have finished different, but that's, that's why you elect people that know what they're doing. That's another subject. Um, uh, but that's no reflection on you or any of your fellow soldiers that served over there. Y'all did your part and you did it well, and you're to be commended for it. And it makes me personally respect you a little bit more in the role that you're in, just okay. knowing your, your background. So Thank I know you. sometimes there's that iron sharpening iron, sure. you know, between, the legislative branch and the agencies. But <laughs> when you do get to know a little bit more yeah. about people personally, uh, I think it puts us in a different perspective to work together. So yes, sir. Uh, I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. So you got two weddings in the future, uh, two little girls and that's right. And, and then the little boy's on his own. He's, 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 <laughs> a, he's going to be spoiled enough being the baby boy. Anyway, we, we yeah. got that in our home, but yeah, that's not a problem. what made you, want to be the director of the game and fish what were you thinking anyway <laughs> right <laughs> well that's a great question um like i said you know i i grew up hunting grew up fishing um and 
the way my folks raised us was you help out around the house, you help in the family business, and if you're doing all right in school, then you need to get your butt outside. And, um, you know, that just lent itself to, to growing up on five-gallon buckets and, and John boats and, and, and deer stands. And, and one of the things that I learned uh, just years and years doing that, that we learned some of life's most important lessons outside either when we're with friends, with with family, or by ourselves. Um, And the opportunity to enjoy that to the extent that I did growing up, we can't take for granted going forward. Uh, And to have that opportunity thrive and available to the public uh, is under threat. And, uh, you know, just a segue from the Marine Corps, I'm not afraid of a fight. Um, and that's something that I'm willing to that I'm that I'm willing to fight for to make sure that that public opportunity exists for my kids and and for my grandkids in the same way that it did for me. So, what important lessons did you learn growing up? What 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 constitutes yeah. an important lesson to you? Yeah. Um, so I'll use this example that I used when they announced me. Uh, you know, I had a duck hunt last year, and. It was right before shooting time. We had a group of mallards come in, sit down on the water, and there was a young guy, uh, a junior, at Catholic High School for Boys right across the street, my alma mater. And it was literally one minute before shooting time. He raised his shotgun, aimed it on those ducks, and his dad was right next to him. And his dad said, son, have some self-respect. Well, ouch. <laughs> and he, he didn't yell at him. He didn't fuss at him. Uh, and his son put his gun down, the ducks flew away, and we didn't see a group of ducks that big for the rest of the morning because that's how it goes, right? Yeah. Um, Those but, ducks are never cooperative. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, but I was reflecting on, on it later, and, I mean, that's really why we do this is because the lesson to that boy wasn't to not shoot before shooting time. It was to have some self-respect, and – who knows when he's going to draw on that later, whether that's in his marriage or in school or in the workplace. Um, and I had a million lessons like that, whether it was perseverance, trying to track something or, or um, f- flexibility or discipline, trying to catch a fish that isn't biting or, you know, just lots of life lessons like that that were best learned outside. Does that mean no uh, dynamite, no telephone, just bait and hook and just wait? Is that what that means? So. <laughs> Not that that's ever happened, but the, do you see what opportunities, what, i tell you what, um, Heidi's in there giving me the signal. So we're going to, we're right. going to, we're going to park the plane for a second. But sure. when we come back, what I want to ask you is this, what opportunities does game and fish provide for kids who maybe didn't grow up in the environment that you grew up in? That's a great question. Because that's what I see missing in society, sure. especially in the absence of fathers in the home. Sure. Uh, anybody can be a baby daddy, but not everybody will be a father. Sure. And uh, so what opportunities are there that Game and Fish provides? And we're going to get into some other stuff in our final segment. You're listening to the Dave Ellswick Show. I'm Kim Hammer, state senator. In for Dave, who has a little bit of vacation time today. Come back after the break. Do you have questions about filing for Social Security? You can get the answers in a simple, easy-to-understand booklet called Your Guide to Social Security. It's from David Lucas Financial in North Little Rock. This 27-page booklet outlines what you need to know, and it can help you get even more income when you file for Social Security. If you're within five years of filing for Social Security, then get this free booklet and get it now by calling 501-222-3315. As a bonus, you're going to receive a free, customized Social Security analysis. It pinpoints the optimal time to wring every nickel out of your benefits. Pick up the phone, call them now, 501-222-3315. Call now, 501-222-3315. 3315. 101.1 FM. The answer. Traffic. Traffic. 
traffic still off to a pretty good start this Thursday morning. This report is sponsored by Lowe's. We still have some minor delays though on the east side, just a minor wreck block in the right shoulder. 40 eastbound just before Kerr Road, exit 165. Are you ready for fall but your house isn't? Luckily Lowe's is what you need and the prices you want to get your front yard, backyard, every yard ready to host this season. Gardening and grilling and leaf blowing starts at Lowe's. I'm Cairo of 101.1 The Answer. Take The Answer with you anywhere with our free mobile app. 1011FMTheAnswer.com Your smart speakers, iHeart or Radio.com. Breaking news and stimulating talk. 101.1 FM The Answer. Harding University is pleased to announce the new Master of Science in Applied Dietetics practice. This is the first program of its kind in Arkansas. It's also one of the few in the country where students can complete their online courses and the required supervised training to become a registered dietitian nutritionist right in their own community or from anywhere they choose. Harding University offers both a traditional master's degree as well as an accelerated bachelor's to master's pathway to meet your educational needs. This is the perfect place to start my journey to become a registered dietitian nutritionist. Harding will not only provide me with a quality education, but also an experience that is Christ-centered and mission-focused. Apply now for Harding University's Master of Science in Applied Dietetics practice. Visit harding.edu slash grad dietetics or call 501-279-4472. Hey guys, I want to tell you about a new sponsor called Liberty Health Share. They bring health care programs to people through a process called health care sharing and they are pretty unique it helps people break free from the old way of paying for health care their supportive community commits to bearing another's burdens in prayer encouragement and financial support so before you sign up for your next health care program they have a few questions for you starting with what do you pay for your health care are you single do you pay more than 199 dollars a month are you a couple do you pay more than 299 dollars a month Do you have a family? Do you pay more than $399 a month? Yes? Then you can join a program to support the health of your entire family for only $399 a month. Sign up any time of the year. Choose your own doctor and hospital. For more information, go to libertyhealthshare.org. That's libertyhealthshare.org. What's up, football fans? I'm Kate Scott. And I'm Mike Golick. And gang, this fall, we're bringing you a fresh new way to hear college football play-by-play. Each week, Kate and I will team up for college football Saturday night, powered by Learfield. Together, we're calling games featuring some of the nation's best teams in the most historic college football venues. We're going to laugh, visit with some interesting guests, because, Mike, you know, Saturday nights are meant to be fun. And we are going to have a ton of it. Join us this fall right here, College football, Saturday night, powered by Learfield. Stimulating talk with Dave Ellswick. 101.1 FM, The Answer. Welcome back to the Dave Ellswick Show. This is Kim Hamer, State Senator, in hosting for Dave today. Off on a little R&R. Let's get right back into our conversation with Austin Booth, who is the uh, not so much new anymore. You, you're fairly new, but uh, director right. to the Game and Fish. And we were talking about uh, some of the important lessons that you learned as a child that you see uh, need to be instilled in in youth today. I gave that personal example, but what I wanted to ask you about is what about opportunities for kids that maybe don't have the home support that you had yep. growing up? Because uh, one of the issues I think you face as an agency is the dwindling number of hunters, reflective in the sales, you know, of hunting licenses, and uh, you're competing against. Uh, I'm going to show my age, Game Boy, and all those other you know yep. video games. Uh, how do you, how are you going to address that yeah. challenge? Well, it, this is a national problem, and it's something that uh, other states are actually seeing in a more pronounced way than Arkansas is. But the kind of national effort to reverse those trends is called R3, uh, recruitment, retention, and reactivation. And, you know, screens get a bad rap, and they're a big part of it. But there's lots of other things going on, too. There, there's fewer married households. Uh, year-round sports are just take a big bite out of the number of boys and, and girls that have the time or the mentorship to get outside. And there's nothing wrong with year-round sports. It's, it's just a fact. But there are tremendous opportunities that we provide for young men, young women, or adults that 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 weren't raised hunting or fishing for them to get outside. 
First thing that they can do is go to our website. There's a drop down box for education. They can do this kind of training online or they can get in any one of our classes that, that we host throughout the state. Uh, we do those at, at our um, education centers and other places, too. Uh, s- something else that, that we have is uh, s- uh, specifically targeted at women called Becoming an Outdoor Woman. And it's a network of outdoors women throughout the state. And all they do is try to bring women that are in, inclined or interested towards the outdoor to either become more of an outdoorsman or to become one to begin with. We also have a community fishing program where where we where we raise fish and we'll take some catfish and we'll stock them in kind of inner city urban areas throughout the state and we'll, and we'll bring kids out, teach them how to fish. Kids still loves to fish. Oh, absolutely. You know, they just have to be provided the opportunity and that's the... exactly right. Okay. And I would say the last thing is I'm going to call on existing hunters and existing anglers that. If they know that little boy or that little girl that um, that that needs to get off the couch, that needs to spend some time outside, knock on the door uh, because we need community for veterans, for those little kids, uh, more now than we ever have. And so it lies on us as outdoorsmen to pass that down to the next generation. Are you calling them out? I'm calling them out. Okay, right here. Right here on the <laughs> Dave Ellsworth Show. You have been called out, you lazy bum hunters. Get out there and do it. So let me ask you, uh, you talked about you raise fish infrastructure yes. within the game and fish. Yep. And I, I know it's been a challenge. It presents as a challenge because of aging infrastructure. Yep. When we talk about the infrastructure of the game and fish, what are some of the things that you're struggling to maintain sure. that you're making a case for? Well, we manage about 3 million acres. That's 10% of the state. Uh, and then in addition to that, uh, you know, 3 million acres of land. And then on top of that, about 600,000 acres of water um, and about 96,000 miles of either rivers or streams that we're trying to manage for sustainability and for the public to make sure that the public can enjoy it now and for the next generation too. Um, and, and so that entails all different kinds of things from roads and bridges to levees, to water control structures, to our fish hatcheries. Not many people know this, but last year, our network of fish hatcheries raised 17 million fish in one year. Um, And for us to keep doing this, we not only have to modernize that infrastructure, our hatcheries, our water control structures, Lake Conway Dam, that's a big one. Um, You know, we need to modernize it, uh, not only because it's reached the end of our life cycle, but also because... uh, you know, the weather that we're facing right now is completely different from from what it was, you know, 50 years ago when we put that infrastructure in. Hey, we we got a few minutes left, and you've been gracious to carry over because uh, I've got Philip with Farm Bureau, and I, there is a common denominator between yeah. game and fish. And <laughs> Of course. And, uh, Philip, we'll talk about that in a second. Prediction for deer season. What are we looking like on the population? Sure. Uh, just give us the snapshot on the deer season because bow season is... opens up, what, tomorrow? Uh, Next week. On the 25th. 25th, yeah. all right. Yeah, so so we always hear hunting's not what it once was. That's especially true with deer season. In 1990, we harvested 90,000 deer. 90,000. In 2020, we harvested 216,000. So the deer numbers are just going nowhere up. Uh, now, 2020 was a record-setting year for us, uh, 216,000. So we expect that to kind of normalize a little bit closer to two, 200,000, but we're really excited. Does that, that does that count the two I hit with my car? <laughs> no. Okay. All right. Well, I had two to that number. My insurance guy wasn't happy, but my son who works at a body shop was. It was one more job. So, yeah. all right. I tell you what, when we come back, I want you to tell us about Pulse. the forecast for the duck season all because right. it is dry as a bone out there. You've been to Canada. Just give us a report on what you think on the upcoming duck season. And you're listening to the Dave Ellswick Show here on 101.1 FM, The Answer. I'm Kim Hammer, State Senator, hosting for Dave today. In studio right now, I've got Austin Booth, who's the Director of Game and Fish. And when we come back, we're going to merge in Philip Powell with the Farm Bureau. Uh, We're going to take a moment to talk about them good old feral hogs out there. You may not think it's a problem, uh, but they don't respect city limit signs either. They will come into Little Rock in a heartbeat. 
and uh, tear you up. So hang on. We'll be back after a minute after this break. Show. Find him on Twitter and on Facebook at Dave Ellswick Show. Dave Ellswick Show. 101.1 FM, The Answer. KDXE FM, Kamek Village, Little Rock, a Salem Media Group station. 101.1 FM, The Answer.
Let me give you a name, Pat Davis. Save yourself a whole lot of money when it comes to health insurance. 30 to 50 percent. Actual insurance, not a share plan. 501-605-6935 or visit him online, yourhealthplanman.com. Here's your forecast on 101.1 FM. The answer. Warm and mainly dry again today. Partly cloudy with a high around 87 degrees. Just an isolated stray shower or two possible. And tonight slowed down to 69. A little better rain chance tomorrow, 30% for Friday. From the Channel 7 Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Melinda Mayo for 101.1 The Answer. 101.1 FM, The Answer, Traffic. Traffic still looking pretty good around the Lower Arc area so far this Thursday morning. This report is sponsored by Lowe's. We are starting to see just some minor delays like tapping the brakes in the southwest. 30 eastbound as you approach 430 from North Alexander Road. Inside the downtown area, things still looking good. We're still moving at the speed limit. Are you ready for fall but your house isn't? Luckily, Lowe's is what you need and the prices you want to get your front yard, backyard, every yard ready to host this season. Gardening and grilling and leaf blowing starts at Lowe's. I'm Cairo on the 101. The answer. Stimulating talk with Dave Ellswick on 101.1 FM. The answer. Hey, welcome back to the Dave Ellsworth Show. This is Kim Hammer, your host, state senator, filling in for Dave. Every time I hear that music, I get that vision of that little old guy. I think he's got white tube socks, shorts on, <laughs> and a vest playing that guitar, dancing across the stage. It just kind of puts me into the shock. But anyway, all right. Hey, we have Austin Booth, director of Game of Fish. He's going to finish up here, and he's got to get down to you – got, you got a busy day today, Austin, don't you? We do. We have uh, the second day of our monthly commission meeting. And we'll wrap that up. And then um, at 1 p.m. today, Governor Hutchinson is going to pronounce September the 19th through the 25th as Arkansas Hunting and Fishing Week and uh, September 25th as National Hunting and Fishing Day. What's the financial impact on the state for uh, fish, for, for game and fish? I mean, the, the, the dollar of value assigned, I don't know if people really know how big of an industry it is to sure. the state, um, give or take a billion. The, uh, the economic impact to Arkansas is 96,000 jobs, 96,000. That's all of out. That's all of outdoor rec, um, and about nine billion dollars in um, economic impact. Ooh, that's a that's a dent in the economy if that goes away. So one more reason to get people engaged in hunting. It uh, that's right. supports the economy of the state of Arkansas, if nothing else. That's right, and it, a huge part of our of. Um, of what goes into conservation comes from hunting licenses and fishing licenses. And, uh, if, if you're not a hunter, you're not an angler, but you, you support conservation and you may not hunt or fish, but you're glad that somebody else is just got there and buy a license. Yep. We'd really appreciate it. Um, the, um, the licenses that, that are, uh, the licenses that are purchased in comparison to cost of other States, how good of a value is our, price mm -hmm. compared to what other states could I, I hear these guys go out of state you know and they go do the pheasant hunt and the elk hunt and all that stuff yeah. and i mean they they mortgage their third grandchild sure so i'm just wondering <laughs> comparison which may not be a bad yeah. thing depending on what kind of kid it is right. but anyway right. uh what what uh how do we compare so i believe the resident the average for a resident hunting and fishing license is about 25 to 30 dollars and ours is uh, uh 1050 yeah, I was going to say, but you get a lot of hunting for a little on that on oh, that license. Yeah, I mean, I mean we we manage six point one million acres. Yeah, six point one million acres. That's a good return on yeah. investment for. What and and a, you know we can keep talking about this, and you'll make me late. But uh, Arkansas is one of the only states where you can buy one of the cheapest hunting licenses there is, and you can hunt elk, you can hunt bear, you can hunt white-tailed deer, ducks, dove, geese, alligator quail we can keep going on and on and on so we have a a very affordable license and you get just an immense amount of hunting opportunity so let me give you an idea and and if you're late but you know sorry governor he's late he's with me uh but what if i 
why couldn't I buy a why couldn't I buy a license for somebody else that I know doesn't have a license as a gift? You know, we give them Sonic cards, we give them all this other kind of stuff. Yep. What if I wanted to buy a license for somebody else that I know doesn't have a license? Because if I buy one for somebody that's going to buy a license anyway, sure. it doesn't help anything. Right. But if I want to do that as a stocking stuffer sure. for Christmas, where I said, "Hey, uh, I want to buy Philip here who doesn't hunt a license," yeah. and say, "Hey, the, I just, you know, it's a gift." Is it a, is that possible? Yes, it is. If if you go on our website um, under the licensing option, we do have gift certificates. Okay, sweet. Duck hunting, uh, man, it is dry as a bone out there. It is. And, and and what are we looking like? Yeah, and it's not just dry here, but it's dry in Canada and in the Dakotas, and that's that's really where it matters right now. Now we need water later on in the season, and uh, Mother Nature's going to tell us what that's going to look like. Um, but as you know, there's lots of different variables that go into duck season. We need ducks, we need water, and we need it to be cold up north. Um, so even though the duck numbers are probably off, um, in Canada or the Dakotas, if they have a really hard freeze, then it, then it may push those ducks down and, and we may have a better experience here. You know, one thing that we're kind of up against is because of COVID, the big U S fish and wildlife survey that they normally do th this time of year. We haven't had that in two years now. So we're kind of flying blind a little bit, but, uh, we're a little worried about the drought. Okay. Well, can't really control that except for pray. And right. uh, so we'll pray for the, uh, we'll just pray for the northern states to freeze out. That's That'd right. probably make it better for everybody else anyway. Uh, we'll pray for them to freeze up there, and we'll pray for <laughs> rain down here. Because, I mean, they're going to put water in the fields, but, man, that's expensive for a mm -hmm. farmer, you know, to have to pump that water in the fields, plus all the issues going on with the aqueduct system and everybody trying to be conservative. Right. So, okay. All right, well. At the same time, a lot of people thought we'd have a bad season. Turned out to be a good season, vice versa. But it's going to be what's going to be. But let's get out there. All right, I'm going to finish up with you two guys because you got to get yep. out here. And this may not apply to somebody that lives in West La Rock, but in reality it does because it's a problem coming to a neighborhood near you. Feral hogs, they don't respect city limit signs anymore. Uh, they're, they're getting very aggressive about moving into the metropolitan area, kind of like bears move in out west into the metropolitan area or elk. We're starting to see the feral hog. So that brings in uh, Philip Paul with the Farm Bureau to talk about that and a few other things. Uh, we had a work group put together. We got a task force that's working on trying to get the number of feral hogs down. Uh, either one of y'all want to comment on that or share any insight on that? Well, first, I would just like to thank the Farm Bureau and the legislature. Uh, that task force was a huge deal for us as the Arkansas Game Fish Commission because people looked to us first saying, what are y'all – what are y'all doing about this? And, and, you know, we only manage about 10% of the land in Arkansas and hogs don't care whether it's privately owned or, or publicly owned. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so that really gave us a lot more depth to work with the feds, to work with farm bureau, to work with ag. Uh, so huge thanks to y'all. Um, and so far I looked at my numbers this, this morning, the task force has removed almost 11,000 hogs this year. Okay. All right. And there's probably a lot more to go for. Those little suckers can breed quicker than you can breathe. There are a lot more to go. And um, if if people are having a hog problem, they can reach out to Ag. They, they can reach out to Farm Bureau or they can reach out directly to us or to the Feral Hog Erad Eradication Task Force. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, I'll get that up. Uh, maybe Dave can get that up yeah. on his website. I'll get it up on the Kim Hammer Show website, which you can listen to the Kim Hammer Show every Saturday noon to 1 o'clock here on 101.1 FM. But I'll get that up on there because the one thing we need to do is when people take a feral hog, we got to track it. We got to track okay. it. Right. And I mean, so we have this wonderful tracker uh, that shows us how many hogs were were killed, collected, harvested uh, in each county. And for the month of August, it said zero in Saline County. Yeah. You can't tell me that there was not a red-blooded American that killed a hog out there. And uh, our data is only as good as the people out there using it. So you can go to the AGFC app um, and you can hit the button for surveys and you can program how many hogs you're seeing, how many hogs you're killing so that we know and the task force knows where we can best focus our hog efforts. Yep. Hey, a uh, personal note, uh, uh, Keith, Cameron, Braden, those two hogs you killed last night, make sure we get those recorded, would you, so we can show two in Saline County. You'll know where they came Good. from. Good. Okay. <laughs> Good. So let's get that done, boys. Um, 
people don't understand the cost though to the state. They they hey, if if I don't have a hog in my field or in my yard, it didn't cost me any any money. There are numerous pictures out there where they've come into the city and actually have destroyed people's, you know, gardens and yards and stuff like that. What's the financial tag of how much feral hogs are costing the state of Arkansas? Well, that's a good question, Senator. I can't answer that because <laughs> I could give you a number and it probably would be way underestimated. Yeah. As we talk about the reporting, we don't know what is, people might not know there's feral hog damage because like you say, they can come in the cities. People might not believe that feral hogs will come in the city. I was talking to uh, one of the guests that's going to be on later today. She's from Georgia. She said on the way to the airport in in Atlanta, uh, she came across a feral hog that was laying on the side of the interstate. I know down in Texas, that's one of the big things that's happening down there is they, you know, start to cost insurance claims just like deer right. up here costing us. It's costing them in the way of insurance claims down there now because of the overpopulation of them. Um so anyway, we just want to put that on your radar screen. I know that, uh, Austin, you got to go. Any parting words from the director of Game of Fish you want to share? Really looking forward to hunting season, to that fall crappie season. Just want to encourage folks to get outside and enjoy what we have in our backyards. Hey, on a personal note, um, I'm going to get with you. I've already talked to some of your field agents. You've got a trailer rigged up for uh, paraplegics and quad quad that are able to be able to go out to hunt that they can get access to. Sure. Uh, I'll get you back on the show. Talk about that. Cause we, Absolutely. I, have, I have a young man that we're going to get that for in order to help him have a good hunting season. So just goes to show the game of fish are very sensitive to the needs of all hunters. That's right. So, all right. Heidi's given me the uh, wrap up for this segment. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to let uh, Austin get out of here and go take care of the governor and, and the commissioners. Keep them good luck, keeping them happy. Go out there Make them happy there. And uh, then when we come back, we're going to pick up with Philip with Farm Bureau. We're going to talk about some other things of interest to you here on the Dave Ellswick Show. You're out on the highway. You're driving down the road. Your car stops. All right. You pull over to the right side. You get on the shoulder. Who do you call to get your car towed? Well, you can go on your smartphone and look and, and pick from the myriad of tow companies you're going to see. But who's going to do the best job? Who's going to do the safest job? Who's going to do the job that you know they're not going to damage your car when they hook you up or they put you on the, on the truck? Well, let me tell you, East End Towing can do that for you. Uh, I'm going to highly recommend that you use them. All you'll have to do is give them a call at 501-888-8849. That's 501-888-8849. No matter the situation, folks at East End Towing can handle it, and they've got all the answers. That's East End Towing, 888-8849. 101.1 FM, the answer, traffic. We're starting to see traffic pick up in the southwest. Still at the moment, just minor delays approaching 430 on 30 eastbound. This report is sponsored by Lowe's. And on the east side, we've got some trouble. Just a slight tap of the brakes. 40 eastbound at Kerr Road. Exit 165. An accident block in the right shoulder. Are you ready for fall but your house isn't? Luckily, Lowe's is what you need and the prices you want to get your front yard, backyard, every yard ready to host this season. Gardening and grilling and leaf blowing starts at Lowe's. I'm Cairo on 101.1 The Answer. News. Opinion. Insight. This is 101.1 FM. The answer. Little Rock police have arrested a suspect in a Wednesday afternoon double homicide. Little Rock police have charged Malcolm Esther with two counts of capital murder for the death of an adult woman and a juvenile. It all happened in the 1800 block of Nichols Road in West Little Rock, about three blocks from Baptist Health Medical Center. Police have yet to release the name of the victims. The Crittenden County Sheriff's Department searched a home for drugs in West Memphis Wednesday. According to police, officers, with the help of the West Memphis Police Department, executed a search warrant at a residence in the 1900 block of South Macaulay Drive. In the house, they found and recovered various drugs such as meth, cocaine, fentanyl, and marijuana, along with four firearms. Police arrested 42-year-old Carlos Seals. For more news and weather, download our free KATV News and weather apps. From the Channel 7 Newsroom, I'm Allison Courtney for 101.1 The Answer. Do you have questions about filing for Social Security? Hey, it's David Lucas from David Lucas Financial in North Little Rock. 96% of Americans 
Americans lose out on an average of $111,000 in Social Security income. And that's why I wrote a simple and easy-to-understand booklet called Your Guide to Social Security. This 27-page booklet takes the complication out of filing for Social Security and makes it simple and easy to understand. If you're within five years of filing for Social Security, get this free booklet now by calling 501-222-9841. And as a bonus, you'll receive a free customized Social Security analysis that pinpoints the optimal time to wring every nickel out of your benefits. This is a $975 value, and it's free. Call 501-222-9841. 501-222-9841. It's the North Little Rock Gun Show this weekend at the Windsong Event Center, the Old Oasis Church in Maumelle. Hosted by the Arkansas Gun and Cartridge Collectors Club. Doors open Saturday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Sunday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. General admission, $10. Children under 12 years old are free. $2 discount for military and police, active or retired, with ID. The Arkansas Gun and Cartridge Collectors Club show this weekend at Winsong Event Center, 7318 Winsong Drive. Dave's back. The lines are open. 501-823-0965. The Dave Ellswick Show, 101.1 FM. The answer. Hey, welcome back to the Dave Ellswick Show. This is Kim Hammer, State Senator, filling in for Dave today. We've had a pretty full morning, got a full rest of the morning, so just continue to hang on. And right now we've got Philip Powell, who is with the Farm Bureau. Philip, thank you for joining us here on the uh, Dave Ellsworth Show. Well, thank you for having me, Senator. You're very welcome. So first of all, just so people got a little comfort level about you, tell tell a little bit to the personal level that you're willing to tell about your family and so they can sense, you know, get the sense of you as being a true Arkansan. Right. Well, thank you. I, uh, yes, I am originally from Alabama, so please don't hold that oh, against me. Oh, gosh. But my saving grace Pull is my... Pull a plug, <laughs> My saving grace is my wife. Uh, she is from Blevins in Hempstead County. We met in Atlanta, of all places, and she dragged me over to Arkansas. And I went to grad school up in Fayetteville and got my master's in agricultural economics. And then uh, I was hired by Farm Bureau in March as the assistant director for rural development and local affairs. So I am a full-blooded Arkansan now. I am working to help our farmers, our citizens, and how we can continue to make Arkansas the best place to live in the country. All right. You got converted is what we would say in Arkansas. So good. Glad to have you being a true Arkansan. Now, listen, you and I had a talk before, and it's it's not intended to uh, be anything negative, but but you have a hearing impairment, and we were talking about that. I want you to tell the folks about that because I think it's a success story that you've been uh, able to get to where you are, even with that hearing impairment. So tell people about that as a means of encouragement. Well, I appreciate that. Yes, I, so I'm actually deaf. I'm what they call profoundly deaf. I was born deaf. Uh, if you had to, I would say I have 99.9% hearing loss. So I am able to hear with the cochlear implant which I, I had the surgery done when I was four, and I'm 34 now. So I've had an implant for 30 years, and without it, I cannot hear. But I've gone through public school, went off to college, graduate school, and now I'm working at Farm Bureau. So it's, you know, not just, just another day in life, and I appreciate it. It gives me great perspective on life, and I thank God every day that I am able to, you know, be a full participant in society and help people. Well, I think that speaks to you as a person uh, that you've you've taken a challenge and you've overcome it to rise to the level that you have. My daughter has a history of cholesteatomas, and mm-hmm. she has actually had her left ear totally uh, eradicated and has no hearing in her left ear, uh, so can be uh, sympathetic with right. where you are, but, but I'm glad that God is using you the way you are as well. So let's talk about Farm Bureau. You just had a big summit last week. Uh, several of us attended about broadband, the hot topic. I, I think it's as hot as uh, masks or vaccines because everybody understands now with reality having hit us during the COVID virus, uh, how deprived we are as a state of uh, broadband. Just And why did, why did Farm Bureau get involved in this? Because you guys were the ones that hosted the summit. So uh, why Farm Bureau? So, you know, Farm Bureau was there in the 1930s for rural electrification. We've been there for the water systems, for, for highways. 
broadband is no longer a luxury <laughs> item. It's a necessity. It's part of our infrastructure. It's mentioned in the infrastructure bill in D.C. Farm Bureau, we are involved because we want to help our members. We're not going into the business of broadband. We're in the business of helping our members, and many of them in the rural areas do not have the access they need to run their farms, to teach their kids. You know, as you pointed out, the pandemic highlighted the lack of broadband in Arkansas, and the Farm Bureau is trying to help move that and com close that gap so that Arkansas can continue to be the attractive place for people to move to. You know, one of the things that was said during the summit that just I, I just didn't think about, I grew up on a farm, mm -hmm. but, you know, if you told me that I needed GPS on a tractor, I thought you were from a third world country talking a foreign language back when I worked on the farm. But the story was told about uh, the necessity of broadband service for the new technologies that's on the tractors because they're so dependent upon it, uh, you know, even just driving that tractor down the field. I mean, uh, I've seen tractors that they can basically drive themselves, but in order to do so, they need that GPS data and the grid layout of the field. But yes, if, pe if farmers don't have that, especially with the labor shortage, there's such a push towards ag technology to, over, to compensate for that lack of labor. So now one farmer can plant 300 acres by himself, but he needs the technology. And to have that technology, he needs to be connected. And so that's how important it is as agriculture is the number one industry in Arkansas and the importance of it to our economy, the billions of dollars it provides to our economy. It's important that we keep agriculture at, up at that high level to provide that. Yeah, that, you know, they were telling the story about the guy was planting his field and his dad, or the son called the dad and said, hey, did you fall asleep the wheel? Well, no, he was actually going down the field and he ran out of broadband service. He lost his cell phone signal to the to the planner right. and, and he started going all over the place with it. So we just don't, you just can't take broadband for granted right. and, and how much it has become an essential part of our society and dependency upon it, whether you like it or not. It's like, and the best comparison I heard is, this is the modern day electrification, uh, get that word right, you know, putting out electricity, what electricity was in 1930, broadband is in 2021. And it's got to be treated with the same respect and the same push to get it out. So we're throwing them millions of dollars in grants at this thing. Uh, one thing we as legislators have had a great concern about, and a group of us are pushing hard, is to get a consultant who will develop the master plan because the money hit the state so quick and the, and we all knew we had a need, but there's, there's a lack of orchestration as far as getting that out there. One of the things I think the summit did was put emphasis on the fact that there is a big need, but how are we going to do this so that we're efficient with the dollars that are being given to us? Your thoughts? Yes. Yeah, so, you know, we had one of the FCC commissioners as our keynote speaker, Brendan Carr. He flew in from D.C., and he's actually at the summit all day to engage with people. But he mentioned this. He said that money is not the problem. There's plenty of money out there. The federal government, as you mentioned, is printing all this money, I believe about $800 billion. And through, fed, through various agencies, we'll be focused on broadband. So money's not a problem. It's the implementation of it, how we make sure we spend it correctly. Like with highways, you know, if we don't, if we we don't build it right this time around, we're going to have to revisit the problem in ten or twenty years that our children and grandchildren have to keep fixing. Like with the highways, we have yeah. to keep fixing them, and we'll do it right with broadband this time around. Well, they're going they're going to feel that burden down the road. So that's why it's very important to have a plan in place. So that's why I'm excited about this consultant, whoever it will be. Hopefully, they'll put us on the right track so that we put we do the job right this time around. Yeah, as the old saying goes, and these old sayings come to mean more and more as you get older, you realize there's wisdom in them. Do it right the first time. You won't have to do it, correct the problem the second time. I'm, I'm down to less than a minute. I'm going to have Senator John Bozeman on when we come back from the break. If you'll hang on a second, maybe we'll have a little inner conversation and get you to participate in the rest of the program here. So we've been talking about broadband in Arkansas. Help is coming. If you're at the end of the line, mm -hmm. uh, as they say, hang on, help is coming. We've got the electric co-ops that are out there. We've got a lot of individual companies that are firing up with all these new contracts. But one of the big things we want to make sure and appreciate Farm Bureau putting the summit together, it got everybody in the room at one time and had a really good discussion is we want to make sure that all the money that's being thrown into the state 
is being managed right so that we get it effective and eliminate duplication of services. All right, you're listening to the Dave Ellswick Show. This is Kim Hammer, State Senator, filling in for him. We'll be right back with Senator John Bozeman. Why are you looking at nothing but brake lights? We've got the answer coming up. 101.1 FM, The Answer. Take The Answer with you anywhere with our free mobile app. 101.1 FM, The Answer.com, Amazon Alexa, iHeart, or Radio.com. Breaking news and stimulating talk. 101.1 FM, The Answer. You want great deals? We've got great deals. DealsForLittleRock.com is your site for discounted deals on food, services, private school tuition, and so much more. Visit DealsForLittleRock.com and save. Happy Feet specializes in comfortable shoes, custom, fitted orthotics, and arch supports. Right now, get a $50 gift card for only $25. DealsForLittleRock.com. Get great deals right now at DealsForLittleRock.com. That's DealsForLittleRock.com. If you owe the IRS back taxes then get ready to pay up the irs has giant private collection agencies actively tracking down folks who owe the irs so if you think dodging them was stressful in the past it's going to get a whole lot tougher optima tax relief has this advice don't wait solve your tax problems now before it's too late optima tax relief works to stop the demand letters stop the aggressive collection actions and stop the irs collectors from targeting you ask optima about the fresh start initiative one of the biggest breaks the irs has ever offered if you qualify you could save thousands, and nobody knows this program better than they do. Optima is A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau, and they get results, having resolved over a billion dollars of tax debt for their clients. Get a fresh start. Call today for your free consultation. Call 800-965-1433. 800-965-1433. 800-965-1433. 
Optima Tax Relief. Some restrictions apply. For complete details, please visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. Here's your forecast on 101.1 FM. The answer. Highs back up in the upper 80s today and only a 10% chance of a few isolated showers. So mainly dry, partly cloudy, and tonight slow down to 69 degrees. Just a little better rain chance tomorrow at 30%. From the Channel 7 Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Melinda Mayo for 101.1 The Answer. 101.1 FM, The Answer, Traffic. Brake lights picking up in the southwest, minor to moderate delays starting just before North Reynolds Road on 30 eastbound as you approach 430. This report is sponsored by Lowe's. And in the downtown area, starting to see some delays pop up on 40 westbound as you approach the 30 interchange. Going to be seeing those brake lights continue from there on 30 southbound to the river. Are you ready for fall, but your house isn't? Luckily, Lowe's has what you need and the prices you want to get your front yard, backyard, every yard ready to host this season. Gardening and grilling and leaf blowing starts at Lowe's. I'm Cairo on 101.1, The Answer. Stimulating talk with Dave Ellswick. 101.1 FM, The Answer. Hey, welcome back to the Dave Ellswick Show. Kim Hammer, state senator, in hosting for Dave today. Off on a little r and We've got a full agenda this morning. If you've been listening uh, you should be better educated than when you woke up this morning. So we hope that you're enjoying the show. We're trying to make it interesting. I've got in studio uh, Phil Powell with Farm Bureau. I've also been joined in studio all the way from Georgia, uh, Catherine Davis, and all the way from Virginia, uh, just outside where Senator Bozeman spends a good portion of the time, Diane Short, Diana Shores, who is the communication director, and they both represent the Day of Tears. We're going to talk to them in just a little bit. But now joining us on the Dave Ellswick line is Senator John Bozeman. Senator, thank you for taking time to be out on the uh, uh, the, the Dave Ellswick show with myself, Kim Hammer. Hey, Kim. Thank you for having me as always, and I certainly appreciate all you do. I, I was listening to the uh, segment regarding broadband, and I'm the co-chair of the Senate Rural Broadband Caucus, and this is so, so very important. Uh, one of the we've had so much tragedy as a result of the pandemic, and yet one of the bright spots has been the recognition of broadband, broadband bake, breaking down so many barriers concerning telemedicine, which is going to be great for rural, rural Arkansas, rural America, uh, the ability now to learn in a, a more proficient way, and then also the telecommuting. So I, I, I really applaud the efforts in Arkansas. There is a lot of money coming into the state. We've got to use that wisely. And uh, we used to think in terms of, I know you're, you're as familiar with this as I am, or more familiar. We used to, th- used to think in terms of the three R's, roads, railroads, and runways. That's how you got ahead. That's how you created economic development with the good jobs that happen if those projects are in the right place. And you throw in water. You simply aren't going to go forward. You're not going to develop as a community or an area if you're not wired, if you don't have broadband. Well, and the effect it has on the cost of um, the property that you purchase. I mean, no longer exactly. do they ask, do you have water? Do you have electricity? Do you have paved right. roads? The first thing they want to know is, do you have broadband service and what's your yeah. width and capability to deliver up and down? So it's actually affecting the price of property based on whether you've got that delivered to you or not. Hey, on a, Very on, much so. And, and I appreciate you working so hard and your cohorts making sure that, that we're not just taking care of, you know, the, the areas that are already have it in the sense of increasing speed and those kind of things. But we actually are getting those end users, you know, getting getting the new areas, getting them wired, getting them uh, in a situation where they can participate. Well, the one thing, the only thing that we as legislators, or one thing among many things we as legislators want, is we want to make sure that all the money that's being sent to the state, that we're maximizing the use of it by reducing redundancy or making sure that it is going to produce the best product that gets put out there so that we don't spend a lot of money and people still have inefficiency in their broadband service, whether it's hardwired or whether that's wireless, either one of them. Let me let me ask you, Senator, uh, a quick question. This is on the political side. If we're blessed to take back, and I think we will, the Congress in 22, what position does that put you in as chair of ag um, – and and is is that where you would end up uh, if we can take back the Congress? Yes, sir. I'm the I'm the ranking mem- member right now. I'm the head Republican on the Ag Committee. And uh, when we take back the Senate in the next Congress, I will become the chair of the Ag Committee, which again, you know, would be a great honor. And I, I think it's an area that we could be a lot of help. Twenty five percent of the 
state's GDP is agriculture. But uh, as you know, Ken, when you get outside of any community of any size, it's probably 85 or 90 percent. So just helping rural America, when you look at these census numbers and you see that, what, 55 of our counties are so lost population, um, it's going to take a lot of work, a lot of us working together, which, which again, a lot of good people are working on it now. But, but making sure that we do all we can to protect uh, our farm community and, and rural America in general. Well, I think that would that that's a huge exclamation point for people to remember that we take back the Senate in 22, which I predict that we will. Um, that that would put you as the ranking member chair of the Ag Committee, which, considering the importance of Ag in the state of Arkansas, that would be huge for us to have you in your position to advocate for us and for organizations like Farm Bureau and the Farmers. Um, real quick, I don't want to take a lot of his time, but you got anything to say about that, Philip? Well, I just want to say Farm Bureau appreciates the work you're doing in D.C. Senator Bozeman, you've been a real asset to Arkansas, and we hope that you'll be in that position next year after the Republicans take back the Senate, because we know how, much, how hard you've worked for our farmers. So I just want to say that Farm Bureau is real appreciative of that. I, I appreciate that, and and you know, there's not a there's not a more important group of people, and we forget that we have so many, so fewer farmers than we used to. But now we go in the grocery store, and we just take for granted the fact that we've got the cheapest, safest food supply of any place in the world. And uh, the Lord has blessed us with all kinds of resources. Our farmers are using those in a very safe, very environmentally friendly way. And it's just a great story to tell, and we really do appreciate the farm community. And nobody does a better job than Farm Bureau in uh, advocating for our farmers in rural America. S Senator, let me shift gears on you a little bit. Um, talk about a, a story that has come out recently in the last day or two about uh, the IRS reporting requirement that is being proposed by uh, liberal president, Democrat Joe Biden and his administration uh, about the IRS needing to report or a reporting requirement to the IRS by banks and credit unions for every withdrawal and deposit over $600. Currently, the policy is 10000 Have they lost their ever-loving freaking mind up there or what? Can you believe that? I, I mean, this is $10,000 now, and that was instituted many, many years ago. So with inflation, it would be, you know, if, if the, the people that put that in, in place many years ago, if they were doing it in today's dollars, it would be much, much, much greater than that. Now we've got an administration that wants to roll it back. It's his big brother. Uh, they want to know, you know, when you were throwing money, when you're putting money in. And this is all about, we're, we're hearing about uh, tax collection and the idea that they want to, you know, get another 80,000 agents, whatever it is, uh, to get very, very aggressive with the uh, people of America. Uh, this is what it's all about, and it really is big brother. Right now, right now the, the IRS is so dysfunctional, not in terms of going after people, but just in their, their customer service. Uh, if you have a problem with the IRS, it's not uncommon at all to get on the phone. After about 45 minutes, they'll do what they call a courtesy disconnect. They hang up on you. They'll say, well, we're not going to get to you, so we're, we're going to be essentially be kind and go ahead and hang up now so you don't have to wait any longer. Uh, this stuff is crazy, and, and the good news is is that uh, we are pushing back, and the uh, public is becoming aware of how far out that the Biden administration actually is. I don't call that customer service. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you no, know. it's absolutely the exact opposite of customer. You know, get your act together. Start serving the public. That's what these— agencies are for you know that's that's what i'm instilling in them that's what you do at the state level you know get these agencies remind them that they're here to serve the problem the public they're, it's not the gotcha big brother attitude but uh, i'll tell you some of the stuff uh, ken is just absolutely crazy with the the taxes they're talking about eliminating stepped up basis right now if somebody dies Valuation of the property becomes at that at the time of death. What they're going to try and do is go back to uh, when the the purchase of the property or the equipment or whatever. So if you know if, if Dad 
uh, purchase this in 1950, it's going to be like a sale. You're going to be expected to come up with all of those dollars. We asked Texas A&M to, to do a study how that would affect our farm communities throughout the country. They're the number one, number one. Uh, I hate to say nice things about Texas A&M, but they do a great since we're going to be playing them in a week or so. But they do a tremendous job with uh, following farms and, and understanding the economics of it. They found that the average would be affected about to the tune of about seven hundred twenty thousand dollars, if you can imagine. So you're talking about breaking up small businesses, medium-sized businesses, breaking up uh, family farms. What you're doing is talking about the government taking over because they'd have to sell that property, and then either the government or, or big business or foreign countries would come in and buy up that property is what it really boils down to, my opinion. Hey, we got to take a break, and uh, Senator, if you can hang on through the break, I'll give you a couple minutes coming on the backside, and I've got a couple really nice ladies from up in your neck of the woods when you're up at the at the National Capitol that I'm going to have on, and if you can hang on through the break, we'll be right back. Sure. You're listening to the Dave Ellswick Show. I'm Kim Hammer, State Senator, hosting for Dave today. Come back after the break. Maybe it's bad weather. Maybe it's just age. It's a lot of different things that can bring your roof to the end of its life and you need to put a new roof on your house or you just need to check to make sure you still have life in the roof on your house. And that's why I always remind everybody about PI Roofing. PI Roofing is the best roofing company in central Arkansas, if not the whole state of Arkansas, as far as I'm concerned. So I want to remind you that you should go to PI Roofing to get things for your roof done. Do it the same way I do it. You call this number, 707-3551. 707-3551 or visit them online at piroofing.com. They'll answer all your questions and get you set up to have a great roof. You're listening to American Ground Radio's Morning Minute. According to a new book by Bob Woodward, General Mark Milley, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, told Chinese military leaders that if Trump ordered an attack against them, Milley would give the Chinese a heads up in advance. Now, if he didn't commit treason in what he told China about his being insubordinate to his commander in chief, perhaps he was telling China he would commit treason for them in the future. So what does our top military officer owe China? And the most disturbing part of all of this is the number of people who were complicit with his intended treason, including Speaker Pelosi, Senator Schumer, and the director of the CIA. Maybe they all need reminding, we are a nation of laws, not of men. This is why Trump derangement syndrome is so dangerous to the future of America. American Ground Radio, where building a better America begins with building a better us. Return each weeknight from 6 to 7 p.m. with Louis R. Abalone and Stephen Parr on 101.1 FM, The Answer. 101.1 FM, The Answer, Traffic. Traffic starting to pick up around the Low Rock area. This report is sponsored by Lowe's. We're now seeing delays at the 440, 530, 30 interchange and the 4030 interchange. And in the northwest, 430 southbound, starting to see brake lights leaving 40 as you approach the river. Are you ready for fall but your house isn't? Luckily, Lowe's is what you need and the prices you want to get your front yard, backyard, every yard ready to host this season. Gardening and grilling and leaf blowing starts at Lowe's. On Cairo on 101.1, the answer. Take the answer with you. Anywhere with our free mobile app, 1011fmtheanswer.com. Tune in, iHeart, or radio.com. Breaking news and stimulating talk. 101.1 FM, The Answer. This is Jerry Boyer of Town Hall Finance for townhall.com. Vaccine mandates are driving vaccine hesitancy. I've noticed a sharp shift upwards in the intensity of rhetoric in opposition to the anti-COVID vaccines from the grassroots since the Biden administration has started advocating various forms of government mandates. People don't like being pushed around, and some people respond to federal government mandates by doubling down on their vaccine hesitancy. The case against mandates is different from any possible case against voluntary vaccine usage. Conservatism has always made a very strong distinction between the state and the society. The state is top-down coercive power. Society is built upon many millions of individual and family decisions. I decided to get vaccinated, not because the government told me to. My research led me to this decision. But no one should be forcing conservatives into groupthink for or against voluntary vaccinations. I'm Jerry Boyer. Dave's back. The lines are open. 501-823-0965. The Dave Ellswick Show. 101.1 FM. The answer. 
Hey, welcome back to the Dave Ellsworth Show. This is State Senator Kim Hammer finishing or filling in for Dave and finishing up today. Uh, Senator, before I open the mic back up to you, I've got uh, I've got Diana Shores with the Trail of Tears uh, in my studio, all the way from Virginia, who lives in the Fifth District. I think you're familiar with that area, uh, Day of Tears. And so, uh, she wanted to make a comment to what you said or what you were talking about on that six hundred dollar issue, Diana. Yes, it's really become an issue where you're going to have individuals in the banking industry, such as bank tellers, bank managers, being the policing arm for the IRS, where they're reporting on movement of money of the average citizen for no reason. So it's a privacy issue, and we are definitely asking members of Congress to to vote against this infringement um, and not put the banking industry in the position of being the policing arm for the IRS. Senator, any thoughts? Uh no, I, <clears throat> I appreciate that and agree with it totally. That's what it's all about. And sadly, you know, not only am I going to vote against it, but I'm working very, very hard to defeat it. And I'm so glad that Kim brought it up because the public needs to understand what's happening. What we should be talking about now is, is a government is things like that I hear and Kim hears as we're out and about with our constituents, uh, labor issues, inflation the supply chain, all of those kind of things. But you're absolutely right. What they're trying to do is weaponize the, the IRS where every little transaction that you do, they want a piece of it. And with inflation, $600 is, you know, $600 is, is, is you know, significant money, but it's not a lot of money at all in the, in the, you know, in the daily scheme of things. So, uh, again, thank you, and thank you for your work on the Trail of Tears. Uh, Senator, anything uh, that I'll give you open mic that you want to talk about? I know Afghanistan's a hot button. I'll just express my opinion. I think Biden just absolutely screwed that up. I had a veteran on earlier today that served, and uh, he didn't say it, but you could tell that it hurts their hearts um, the way that that thing was handled. And I know there have been committee meetings, and some of you all have been pretty brutal on the folks that have been in charge, which I think they deserve. Any thoughts or comments on that or any other subject you want to talk about? Well, the only, the only thing I'd say about Afghanistan is, is there's no way to there's no way to, to make this nice. It was a complete debacle, and uh, I wanted out of Afghanistan. Most Americans did. We've actually been phasing out of there for years. We only had about 2,500 troops there, um, but the way that we did it uh, again was a complete debacle. The good news is, it, it, you know, we're having some really good hearings going on right now. And, uh, you know, Democrats and Republicans both are, are not pulling any punches. I think we'll get to the bottom of it. But certainly somebody needs to be held accountable. And we need to, to learn from it. And I, I'm like you. I feel so sorry for these folks that, uh, you know, served in uh, Afghanistan. I'm, I'm concerned about Iraq now because this has showed such tremendous weak, weakness and lack of leadership. You worry about uh, these uh uh, fanatics, these Islamic fanatics, uh, getting uh, ginned up and then feeling like that the United States is, is not going to participate uh, if they, you know, go forward in, in places like Iraq. So it has far-reaching, uh, far-reaching things. The other thing, Kim, we got to remember, and, and I don't want this to be sidetracked uh, with these hearings, is we've got, uh, you know, over. We don't really understand how many. But we've got uh, well over 100 Americans that are still in the country trying to get out, but we just deserted. So uh, this is a, certainly very, very important as we go forward. And the one thing I want to be unmistakably clear about is there is no shame, nor should there uh, be any, uh, any thought that the military who has served over there have not gone above and beyond duty. It's not on them. They did right. They did good. They did what they were asked to do. It belongs to Biden and Biden alone uh, for the way the exclamation point was put on this thing. But there is no dishonor, nor should there ever be any uh, position that we don't think that our troops didn't do the right thing because they did giving people a taste of freedom. Unfortunately, we jerked that freedom out from underneath them with the way Democrat Joe Biden went about doing it. So that's yeah. Kim Hammer's well, opinion. Well, that's uh, that's my opinion. And <clears throat> And I'm certainly, you know, as I go around the state of Arkansas, the people of Arkansas's opinion, and uh, we're so proud of our military. I don't think in my lifetime that we've ever had a, a situation where people aren't more 
proud of those serving and then also our veterans. But I don't think I've really ever talked to somebody that served there that, that once they completed their mission, things didn't feel like we need to get out. The question is, how do you do that? And you don't pull out your troops before you pull out, you know, taking care of your allies, taking care of your citizens and all that. It, it just simply was a was a complete debacle, and, and there's really no other way of saying it. Okay. All right, Senator, I, I hate to cut you off, but I know your time is valuable. I've got to give these ladies a little bit of time uh, to finish up the Dave Ellswick show oh, yeah. here. I so appreciate you coming on the Dave Ellswick show this morning. We appreciate the job you're doing and look forward to having you back on. Well, thank you so much, and thank you for the great work that you do taking care of your constituents. Thank you. Thank you. That's Senator John Bozeman on the Dave Ellswick Show, and now we're going to turn our attention to uh, the end of the show regarding a organization called Day of Tears. And ladies, uh, just tell us what is the Day of Tears. Thank you for having us on your show. <clears throat> the Day of Tears started about five years ago when our president, Ken Adams, was traveling down the road and he saw a flag at half mass and he asked himself the question, who died? And Ken, being very pro-life, began to ask himself, how as a nation are we memorializing the millions of babies that have been lost to abortion? So Ken came up with this idea of an organization that would create a national conversation about the lives of babies lost to abortion and answer that question, who died? The Day of Tears seeks to get resolutions in states um, all across the country where flags are lowered on January 22nd to memorialize the lives lost, but can also to recognize that abortion hurts women, it hurts men, and it hurts their families. So it's a day where flags can be lowered, where families can grieve the abortions that they've had, and they can um, remember that there's value in the lives that have been lost to abortion. The significance of January 22nd, I'm asking the obvious, but just for the benefits of those who don't know, why January 22nd? January 22nd, 1973, is when the Roe versus Wade decision came out of the Supreme Court, making it legal for women in America to get abortion. And there's been 62 million babies lost since that time. One third of my generation is gone, not here, because people made a decision that their lives had no value. The Day of Tears honors their lives and again, creates a national conversation about their value of life. And Catherine, how'd that get you involved in the organization? Because you're on the board of directors, correct? I am on the board of directors. I um, have a heart for the unborn and have been working to end America's scourge uh, uh, across the nation, in particularly educating black women about how abortion is impacting the black community. It's not just a woman's rights decision the way they want to uh, get us to believe, but it's an instrument of population control. And so they target black women and their children through the abortion industry, um, and they are succeeding in doing what Ruth Bader Ginsburg said was the reason for Roe v. Wade in the first place to get rid of the population so we didn't want too many of them. Guess what? They are going to be on the Kim Hammer Show this Saturday from noon to one. This is a little bit of a teaser. We're going to have a really good conversation. You can tune in on Saturday from noon to one here on 101.1 FM, The Answer, or join us live on Facebook, either on my personal Facebook show. Uh, you can go to thekimhammershow.com and pick up the uh, interview but these ladies are going to stay in all the way from Virginia and all the way from Atlanta, Georgia. They are in Little Rock, Arkansas, because this past session, Representative Deanne Vaught was the leader on getting the Day of Tears uh, officially here on the books. And when you listen Saturday, we're going to talk about Virginia was actually the first state to do it. But you're going to have to hear what happened when you listen to the show on Saturday on the Kim Hammer Show, because these ladies are going to be my guests this week. You've been listening to The Kim Hammer Show. We've uh, had a great lineup today. Hope that you've benefited from your time getting ready this morning. Hope we didn't cause you to uh, forget to put your deodorant on or shove your toothbrush down your throat hearing something that was said on here. But listen, we really appreciate you being on the Dave Ellswick Show, listening as guests today. And we look forward to you. Uh, we look forward to Dave getting back after he gets his vacation time under his belt. He needs it. 
And so you come back and listen tomorrow to the Dave Ellswick Show. And tune in Saturday from noon to 1 here on 101.1 to the Kim Hammer Show. This has been the Dave Ellswick Show. Find him on Twitter and on Facebook at Dave Ellswick Show. Dave Ellswick Show.